Hello, I'm David Capes, and I'd like to introduce you to the Springfuser, a new drug delivery device from Go Medical Industries. The Springfuser is a syringe pump designed to fill a niche in clinical practice between electronic pumps and manual bolus injection. It is less time consuming than manual injections, less expensive than electronic pumps, and compared to gravity infusions, is more accurate and allows more mobility. The Springfuser consists of three basic components. A reusable spring cartridge, a conventional syringe, and disposable flow control capillary tubing. Its innovative design gives the Springfuser a number of distinct advantages over conventional systems, making it quicker and easier to use, more portable, less expensive than other systems, reliable, and it requires no external power source. The spring fuser differs from other syringe pumps as it works by controlling the outflow of pressurised fluid rather than by pushing the syringe at a controlled speed. The spring within this cartridge applies a constant force to the syringe plunger, pressurising the fluid in the syringe, while the flow rate from the syringe is determined by the flow control tubing. A selection of tubing is available to cater for a range of uses. All have distinctive colour-coded flag labels. The green flag indicates a flow rate of 10 mils over 5 minutes. Other flow rates are 10 mils over 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 2 hours, 4 hours and 8 hours. The flow control tubing has been calibrated with saline, therefore the flow rate may vary according to the drug solution viscosity. A viscosity correction table is provided for calculation of the exact infusion time. For example, the viscosity correction factor for flucloxacillin, 1 gram in 10 mils, is 1.4, and benzyl penicillin, 1.2 grams in 10 mils, is 1.5. Therefore, the infusion time will be 1.4 and 1.5 times the label time, respectively. However, as the viscosity correction factor of antibiotic solutions is usually in the range of 1 to 2 times saline, all you need to remember is that antibiotic infusions will take approximately 1 to 2 times the labelled infusion time. So, with 10 mils in 5-minute flow control tubing, a 10 mil infusion will take from 5 to 10 minutes. To use the standard spring fuser models, simply fill the syringe, attach the flow control tubing, push the syringe into the spring fuser and twist to lock into position. Finally, prime the tubing by removing the cap. It's now ready to be connected to the patient. A word of warning, do not disconnect the flow control tubing while the syringe is in the spring fuser. Otherwise, this will happen. The flow control tubing can be connected directly to the cannula. However, if the patient requires other injections or fluids, a three-way tap, or V-set, can be connected between the tubing and the cannula to allow additional venous access. For short-term infusion, the device can be simply strapped to the forearm. For longer-term infusions, it's preferable to hang the spring fuser around the neck, in which case a low-volume extension set is added between the syringe and flow control tubing. The spring fuser is ideal for a number of applications. On wards where a lot of antibiotics are given manually, the spring fuser will considerably reduce the time taken for an antibiotic round. It allows other patients to be connected whilst the first patient is being infused. The spring fuser is ideal for those drugs which require infusion over a minimum time period to avoid toxicity, such as phenytoin, digoxin, cimetidine and ranitidine, and cytotoxics. It can also be used for continuous infusion of small drug volumes, notably heparin, aminophilin, 
and desferioxamine infusions for haematology patients. In pain management, the spring fuser can administer continuous opioid infusions to replace four hourly intramuscular injections. It provides the safety of a maximum flow rate and a predetermined refill time depending on the flow control tubing chosen. It can also be used in specialised circumstances such as skeletal muscle relaxant infusion during anaesthesia, arterial line maintenance instead of a cuff pressurised bag and infusion maintenance during patient retrieval and transport. Probably the two most common applications of the spring fuser are intermittent antibiotic injections and continuous opioid infusion. Let's take a look at two practical applications. This patient is receiving flucloxacillin one gram four times a day. A spring fuser is taken to the bedside along with the dissolved antibiotics already drawn into the syringes. The flow control tubing chosen is 10 mils over five minutes in order to replace manual bolus injection. Remove the cap from the flow control tubing and place in a suitable container. Discard if a replacement cap or injection port is to be used. Connect the syringe containing the flucloxacillin to the flow control tubing, then push the syringe into the spring fuser to start the infusion. You're now free to perform other duties or attend to other patients. When the infusion has finished, simply remove the spring fuser and recap the flow control tubing. The tubing can be left in place for as long as standard intravenous tubing. This patient has been prescribed 4 hourly PRN morphine for post-operative analgesia. The spring fuser is being used as an alternative to intramuscular injections. The patient is now due for another dose. The setup for this patient consists of a 10 mil spring fuser with 10 mil in four hour flow control tubing attached to an extension set. The 10 mil spring fuser was chosen because it's lighter and less bulky than the 30 mil models thereby allowing greater patient comfort. Unlike gravity infusion, there's no danger of air being infused with this system, as the infusion simply stops when the syringe empties. Dilute solutions, such as morphine, have the same viscosity as saline, so viscosity correction factors can be ignored. The spring fuser has a wide range of potential applications in the hospital and home setting. Specifically designed as an easy to use, inexpensive syringe pump, it provides a reliable minimum infusion time, allows greater patient mobility, and has the potential to save time and money.